the domains and ranges of the sine and the cosine. So this will be a quick one. Let's try that again. So we're looking at the sine and the cosine. And we want to know the domain of these functions. Well, the sine and the cosine have the same domain, all the real numbers. I mean, let's say we want to take the sine or the cosine of negative 724. We don't have a degree symbol, so that's negative 724 radians. So we go around the circle, two pi radians, four pi radians, six pi radians. We're going clockwise because of this negative here. And we go around 724 radians. After 724 radians clockwise, we wind up around here. And the x coordinates, the cosine of negative 724, and the y coordinate of this point is the sine of negative 724. So, any number, big or small, positive or negative, you go around the circle that many radians or that many degrees, and wherever you wind up, the x-coordinate gives you the cosine, the y-coordinate gives you the sine. In fact, this is the great advantage that the unit circle has over the right triangle definition, that you can define the sine and the cosine of any number. What about the range? So the sine and the cosine both have the same range. The numbers between negative one and one. Why is that? Well, here's an, an extra, sorry, an extremely lumpy unit circle. And you take the sine and the cosine of any number, and it's the x-coordinate for the cosine of a point on this circle. For the sine, it's the y-coordinate of a point on the circle. Well, this is a unit circle. It... gets up to one in this direction, and it goes one unit in this direction. So horizontally, all of the points on this circle are stuck between negative one and one. So these x coordinates are cosines. So the cosines are stuck between negative one and one. And again, this is a unit circle. We go up 
one, we go down one. So the y coordinates are stuck between negative one and positive one. And these y coordinates are signs. So the sign is stuck between negative one and one. 